Uh, th our work in the Intermountain West uh, focuses on the five big southern Rockies states, I'll note, which I'll note are all, uh, many of them swing, swing states in the 08 elections. But this is uh, Nevada, uh, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. Three of those are uh, very close swing states uh, in the coming elections. And each of them, we're saying, is dominated by a massive urban core or corridor, really. Southern Nevada sprawling into Arizona even, the Front Range area around Colorado, uh, in, in around Denver, uh, what we call the Sun Corridor that runs through Arizona, uh, linking uh, Tucson to Phoenix. Uh, and in the Wasatch Front, it's a long, linear development around uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, so we're saying these states are some of the most important states in the national election coming up, and they are dominated by some of the nation's most urban uh, new corridors. So it's a fascinating uh, you know, realization to think that the nation's election is going to be very much influenced by these new megapolitan areas, as we call them. This region is just growing at an astonishing rate as population shifts into the region. So we're seeing astonishing growth, staggering economic transformation, incredible uh, uh, natural you know, pressure on natural ecosystems, environmental ch uh, challenges, but super fast growth is the main factor. And, and to the point that the region is what we're becoming what we're calling a new heartland. It's becoming the new center of growth and even industrial change in America. So this is a fantastically important area that's been misunderstood by the rest of the nation. These places are uh, wrestling with astonishing growth that has serious side uh, effects, uh, uh, unbelievable, staggering uh, transportation and infrastructure uh, challenges, uh, major challenges in taking a transitioning economy, making sure it's a high value uh, innovation driven economy that provides more good jobs. Uh, uh, unbelievable serious side effects from our unresolved immigration uh, uh, policies which are, you know, stressing uh, uh, communities uh, and uh, governments as they provide services and creating major educational challenges. And then finally, these places are almost the definition of the autoscape. These are uh, linear, somewhat mass-produced suburban places that need to be, you know, retrofit to, to in the era of $4 gas, you know, to create a more attractive and convenient and accessible and efficient urban fabric. So tremendous challenges that are, I would say, less different from the rest of the country than in the past. It's just they're at such an extreme, you know, scale. Our view is clearly plus size challenges, you know, super size policy challenges are going to require uh, a new partnership with Washington. And our, our uh, request or uh, uh, notion is that uh, Washington needs to lead on the things that it should lead on and per accept its responsibilities that are inherently national, providing transportation linkages between cities and me metropolitan areas, making sure we have a competitive freight corridors. Uh, the, the federal government needs to make sure that we're investing in the innovation economy with strong science and R&D. Uh, Federal, only the federal government can set a framework for immigration, right? Uh, and we've had gridlock on finding a sensible, balanced immigration policy. And finally, we need a carbon framework uh, to reduce emissions and respond to climate change in these places which are stressing the economy and or stressing, stressing the environment and are places where we can retrofit, you know, development patterns. So all of these things are major challenges that require a new federal tactful, limited, but responsible involvement to accept f the, the appropriate federal uh, roles. But then in other, in other respects, we, we want to see these places further empowered to solve their own problems, which they're good at.